surely we don't know about tomorrow, tomorrow but we know for sure the Lord tomorrow. The person who holds tomorrow are the person uh, is the person and the reason why we are here this morning. We know that we are here because he's worthy of it. He's worthy to be served. He's worthy to uh, worship. And our message is a question about uh, why God is worthy of worship. We know that one author un answered the question like this. We worship God because He is worthy. Not because we as worshipers get something out of we look upon worship only as a means uh, of getting something from God rather than giving something to God, then we make God our servant instead of our Lord. And the elements of worship become a cheap formula for selfish gratification. Now, to experience and enjoy worship one was willing to pay the price. Amen? And to have a worship experience that will please God. Because we believe that true worship will bring a transformation to the worshiper. Ordinary Christians want to be spectators. At, and we know that most church members are there, uh, are content to attend church, uh, to attend church Sunday after Sunday, without experiencing worship. And there are more multitudes of people have no thoughts towards God at all. You see, and to understand worship, we must look at where. It begins. I remember in in the verses that we just read a while ago in James chapter twenty two, and in verse five says, "And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with us, and I and the lad." He said, "And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you." Another, another passage of scripture in the New Testament, as it says from uh, the book of uh, Matthew chapter 4, uh, we could see that uh, he is worthy, no? In verse 10 of Matthew chapter 4, it says, Then saith Jesus unto him, Get the hands, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him, okay, only shalt thou serve. From the very mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, he was telling Satan to get the hands, to get out, to be out of his presence. And he also said that, Nasusula, it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord. Satan was uh, has given not just only a warning to get out, but a reminder that uh, Jesus, as the second person of the Godhead, is worthy of that worship. We know that uh, in in our message, why God is worthy of our worship. There are five things that we need to consider. We know that uh, even Abraham, he was told the servants to he and the lad, him and the lad will go yonder and worship God. You see, 
remember uh, in our first point that worship begins with God. Amen. It begins with God. We know that the first three commandments given tells us that worship begins with God. Ano sabi on number one is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That leaves God only. Amen. Thou shalt have no other gods. <coughs> and then another thing in, in, in the commandment is, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. It means that that does away with any idols and leaves God only. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And we know. And then another thing is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Another thing is that lives, that lives God only. So worship begins with God. Unless God initiates worship, man would be helpless. <coughs> man would be helpless in worshiping Him. Remember that in verse 5 of Genesis chapter 22, Abraham worshipped that, that was mentioned in verse 5 in response to God's invitation. Once again, when we, when we, we, we go to, uh, to the verse, uh, in verse 5, Sinabi ni Abraham, uh, and Abraham said, and to his young man, abide you here with us. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So here, we could see that in verse 1 also, in Genesis chapter 22, and it came to pass after these things, that God did tell <coughs> Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. We know the reason why God begins that conversation. <coughs> God's purpose for Abraham and the lad and Esau to go somewhere else. For what reason? To worship him. Amen. Two of them, they they travel. Uh, much much traveling happens, and like now, uh, we are com comfortable with what we are doing when we travel from places to places. But before, no, that's not so easy. That was not uh, hindi po napakadale, napakahila, paglalakad. Uh, but let, let me tell you, worship begins with God. In the Panginoon, God told Abraham to go in Mount Moriah. Abraham told Abraham, uh, God told Abraham to uh, to go there and worship him. Amen. So uh, worship begins with God. Notice in the second thing here, worship is our response to God's command. In verse 3, this is what they did. Sabi niya, and went unto the place which God had told him. You know what I saw in this phrase? I saw his response in faith. Amen. Now just imagine, we could see here a uh, uh, response in faith. When Abraham began his journey to the mountain, it was not an act of worship. It was an expression 
of faith toward God's word. You see? Because he was commanded to do so. He was commanded uh, uh, to bring Isa or Isa. He was commanded to go uh, to the mountain or uh, to Mount Moriah and do some worship service there. Now listen. We could see that it was an expression of faith in God's word. If faith is removed from this account, it is nothing more than cold-blooded murder. Amen? You know the reason why he needed to bring Isaac? Isaac needed to be a sacrifice as a part of their worship. You see? So, the worship of God must be guided by the Word of God. Amen? When we come to God, when we go to this place, we, we carry in our hands, with our hands, a Bible. Because we, we know that from the book that uh, we always hold, there was an instruction there in what we're going to do. So listen, our authority in worship, our pattern in worship, our object of worship is not the traditions of men, but a response to God's word. You see, a response to God's word. We clearly see that Abraham did something indirect to, uh, in response to God's word. Therefore, from unquestioned obedience to, to known will of God as revealed in his word is essential to true worship. Mga kapatid, until our life is in total surrender to the, uh, to the obedience and faith in God's word, worship will evade our Christian experience. Now, <coughs> there is a passage in scripture found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 8, 17, uh, with regards to Abraham. This is what Abraham did. He said, By faith Abraham, when he was trying to offer Isaac, when he was trying, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son. I just imagine, ano? Sabi na pa God told Abraham to offer Isaac. And then, the one who gives instruction uh, uh, anong ginawa naman sa kanya? He offered his only begotten son. Now we know that both uh, Isaac was the only begotten son of Abraham. Right? And we know also that Jesus Christ becomes a sacrifice <coughs> for us and Jesus Christ was the only begotten son of God. As John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. As what? As a sacrifice. Now so just imagine, so here we could find that <coughs> worship is our response to God's command. Response in faith, and the worship of God must be guided, amen, by the Word of God. Abraham followed instruction because this is the command of God to do. You wake up early, they travel long, they have to, to climb the mountain and do some uh, uh, sacrifices as part of their worship. So we could see here that uh, Abraham's faith in God's word enabled his obedience uh, to experience the blessing of God's promises. We know that there are Christians who know nothing about worship simply because they have not acted in obedience to the Word of God. Ama? They do not know because they do not even know the Word of God. Remember, Christian, 
without worship, the Christian life will be meaningless and empty. You see, it will sooner uh, or later become a burden and a hardship to live a Christian if we do not if we do not worship. Now, notice here what act of obedience has kept you from having a worship experience. Just because we come uh, this morning, uh, the morning service, and it will come worship service, gives no guarantee that we will worship God. Now listen, we must be obedient to His Word. Amen. Kinakinangan sinusunod natin kung ano po yung sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos to enjoy the real, the truly meaning of uh, having a worship experience. If we ignore the Bible, we will miss out on worship and without worship, the Christian life is not enjoyable. Amen. Thank God that in our church, we just not we do not ignore the Bible. We give importance. You know, because of this, we know our standing before God. Even before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, we saw our standing before God, that we are lost. Amen. We know uh, that the Bible declares our standing being dead in trespasses and sins. And within this book, Within the pages of this book that we are studying, we've learned on how to get saved. And uh, with this book, we claim on His promises how to be secured and how to be assured of our salvation. And then within the pages of this book that we, 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 we were studying, we've learned that uh, with, with this book, we know that uh, we can... We can cling on the promises of God. And Bible, uh, reading, and studying the Bible is part of our worship. And that's why without this book that we're opening in every Sunday school, in every worship services, dito po nagiging meaningful yung worship natin. Because we saw the real instruction in this book. Remember, so if we ignore the Bible, we will miss out on worship. And without uh, worship, the Christian life is not enjoyable. Yeah, talagang, despite of the hectic schedules, a genuine, growing Christian, for sure, uh, uh, he don't like to miss. We don't like to miss our services or our worship time because this is part of our relationship with God. You see? So, makita po natin dito that worship is our response to God's word. This is what God, God wants me to do. This is what God wants me to, to learn. This is what God wants me to experience. So listen, we are instructed by the Word of God. Now, number three, worship requires giving. Right? You know here in verse 2, as we go back to our text from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, it says, And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, into the land of Moriah and offer him there. But hindi na lang sabi ko ng bahay nila, di ba? Gumawa sila. Why not at the back of their uh, of their house and do some altar there and start uh, preparing for for uh, a place for a burnt offering and if it, if it is necessary, he's up to be sacrificed. Why not? No, no listen, in the instruction of coming on. But notice here, worship requires giving. He said, Take 
Now their son, their only son, is a uh, whom thou lovest. And you know what he said? And offer him there. Reverend, what it meant to Abraham? Have you Mahadagarin to Abraham? Words for Abraham, it's very hard. Now just imagine it took a hundred years of waiting until he noticed that he will be going to have a son. Then finally, as uh, as Isaac grow up, then the Lord will require him to suddenly offer as a sacrifice. What it meant to Abraham? Giving his son meant that Abraham's name would not be carried on. You know the reason why? What I say? Who will continue the name of Abraham if Isaac will be slain or will be killed? Who will continue the Kanyan generation? Isaac was the seed. And he was the one that would carry on the name of Abraham, and now Abraham must sacrifice. Uh, is unto the one who had given him originally. You gave it and you're asking to, 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 to give it back to you. Now notice, this is instructing us that worship is not a cheap thing. Amen? Because sometimes it requires the hard thing to do. It's to sacrifice. And there must be a sacrifice. There must be a sacrifice required offered in worship. The question is for all of us is what is our sacrifice? The world has given us a lot of temptation. Especially in a time where worship is important. Sometimes it's time to balance and do some who will prioritize with this. But I want you to understand that's why uh, what is our sacrifice? What do we give that is costly and sacrifice? Oh, and sacrificial. We could see here that there must be a sacrifice required offered in worship. Because time, parang uh, the devil is tempting us to do such thing in a time we know that is for the Lord. Or there are times that uh, there are some physical need in, in the physical aspect that uh, we truly needed it. And sometimes uh, it took that something that we have to give to the Lord, we cannot give because there's something in the in the place in the place of the world that parang, uh, we need to do it first. Now listen to this Christian. What do we give that is costly and sacrificial? Remember that David insisted that he gives something of value for his worship. Notice that in the book of First or Second Samuel, chapter 24, verse 24 says, Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of the treaties that cost me nothing. Now listen, we haven't worshipped until we have given. Amen. Kaya nga, giving is more than giving money anyway. Our time, now the question is, how much time does God get each day of the 24 hours? Does he get half? Does he get a fourth? Maybe a third. 
how much time do we give him every day? Diba? Diba? How much time we have Sunday? Well, we have no, especially now, we have no evening service. Actually, uh, most of the landmarkers, most of the uh, fundamentals, they have worship, two worship services in, in Sunday. They have morning service and they have evening service. They spend much time, but we have only uh, how many hours? Two and a half hours, sabi na po natin. But the question is, are we giving the best of the time for the Lord? But how much time we spend to the world? We give our best. But the question is, do we give our best sacrificially unto the Lord? Now listen. Tignan natin. Our ability. God gives every church the talent and the workforce that is needed to carry out the work of the particular church. So the, the question is, are we doing what God expects of us? It is a composition of people. Do we practically involve in, in every aspect of, 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 of our services to God? Now, there is no shortage of places to serve. But I want you to understand this. Only those who are willing. Amen. We are well instructed by the word of God. But openness and willingness of our heart to obey God's word will lead you to a more meaningful service and to a more meaningful worship. And we know that kung naiintindahan po natin yun, there is no shortage. Wala akong pangmihinaya. Maybe there, there were more fruits on our toil and in our labor. But because sometimes we're not giving our best unto the Lord. So, worship requires giving. And then, uh, uh, number four, worship must glorify God. We know here that worship gives to God a place of absolute preeminence and thus glorifies Him to the exclusion of all others. Notice that in Revelation chapter 4 and in verse 10, He said, The four and twenty elders fall down before Him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. I remember there's one <coughs> preacher says that because of the worthiness of God, and even after he said in his in his preaching, because God is worthy of everything. And uh, uh, when 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 he came and rewards us, a truly worshiper of the Lord, even the, the rewards that they receive from God itself, they will throw it at the foot of Christ as an act of their worship to God. Because they believe that worship must glorify God. When you come to church, does God glorify? Does He glorify uh, in our worship? Because we give everything, every talent, every best, everything we have for God as an act of our worship to God. And for our last point, worship brings blessing to the worshiper. Amen. Brings blessing. How, how does God show the blessing to the worshiper? Notice here, let's go back to our text in verses 16 to 18. He said, uh, in Genesis chapter 22, and said, by myself, 
I have sworn, pinangako ko, sinabi ng Panginoon, because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son. Imagine, he was already in the act of slaying and killing his son, his only beloved son, Isaac, and offered to God as a sacrifice. Uh, even he might during the time he was hurting he felt the pain of losing his own son but because God is requiring him to offer unto the Lord he is willing to give it up to God Amen is that our attitude are we be much willing to give up everything to to, to as an act of our worship to God. Now, this is what God said to Abraham in verse 16 and 18. Uh, and said by myself, I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing, sabi niya, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess all of the gate of his enemies. And he said in verse 18, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. He allowed Abraham to have his son again. <coughs> Amen. We could see that God sees the heart. God knows your mind. God sees your heart. When you come to church, if uh, uh, talagang your heart uh, is truly in this place or somewhere else. Now listen, when we give to God in worship, He will certainly give it back to us again. Because there are times, uh, in order for God to bless you, He had to do first a test. This is what He did to Abraham. And God sees the heart of Abraham. He sees his faith. He sees his obedience. He sees uh, his willingness to sacrifice. And in return, nakita ko natin, Isa not become a sacrifice. Because the Lord had provided or provided a sacrifice. Brethren, those who honor God, He will honor them in return. Amen. Sabi ng Panginoon eh, nakita ko ang iyong puso. And in thy seed, sabi niya, all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou has obeyed my voice. He will pour out his blessing upon those who honor and worship him. You, God wants, would you like God to, to, to pour out the blessings? Then we have to listen to his voice. We have to follow his instructions. We have to do what He requires. At makikita po natin, do not, huwag natin panghinayangan yung mga bagay na binibigay natin sa Panginoon. Because God has returned what we gave to Him. More than what you give. You see, Abraham gave his son and God gave him back to him. Amen? Binigyan rin sa kanya pabalik. Oh, do not touch him. Do not kill him. Look back. And he saw a ram caught in a thicket. A sacrifice the Lord had provided. You see, this is what God has done for you and I. He has given us His beloved Son with no reservation with hell. Amen? Imagine, His Son. Anong ginawa na Panon? The Lord God gave His Son for you. 
And I could say, I'm glad that now I am related to God. Amen. I'm glad that I am a Christian. I'm glad that I am heaven-bound person. I'm glad that any time soon when he returns, I will be with him because that is his promise. Now listen, Abraham gave uh, God his son and God gave him back to him. This is what God has done for you and me. He, is, he has given us his beloved son with, with no reservation with help. He not only gave us his son on the cross for our salvation, but he now gave his son to us on the throne for our satisfaction. And Christian, he said in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 32, before I close, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Brethren, worship will bring untold and unnumbered blessings to you, the worshiper. Just follow him, obey him, do what his word required to do, and you will notice. You will receive more to what you have given. And we know that uh, we, will, we will conclude with a question. Then, why should I worship him? Because of who God is. He's He's our creator. And he is our savior. What does God be? We know because of what he has done. Two verses that I would like to read to you as I close. Now two verse, yeah, two verses. In Ephesians chapter 1 and 3, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places and in Christ. Amen. Imagine, and in verse 20, which he wrote in Christ when he raised us from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Will we worship God today? <clears throat> it is our choice. God has commanded him. He desires it. He deserves it. He glorified by it. And he has given us his son. We will give him our worship. So, as I close in our message, why God is worthy of our worship. So, knowing the word of God in worship. So, knowing him well and doing our best for him. Amen. May the Lord God bless us.